I know is God allowing me, we've got two more services on this particular topic of things to come. And so I'm not going to do review right now. I'm going to just go on with uh, what we were talking about. Today we're going to talk about the Antichrist. And, and we started that last week of talking about the organization that the Antichrist is going to use to gain power. We talked about the uh, revived Roman Empire and the, um, the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar saw that had all the kingdoms till Jesus Christ sets up his earthly kingdom, his millennial kingdom, that gives us an understanding of world events. And so uh, we're going to now go, um, we'll tie it together, we'll turn to Revelation chapter 17, verses 10 through 13, and we'll tie up the organization that the Antichrist is going to be coming the head and the power of and then we'll talk about specifics of him. Revelation 17, talking about the beast, starting at verse 10. And there were seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, and he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no uh, kingdom as yet but received power as kings uh, one hour with a beast. Um, I would go into detail explaining every of the details about the five kings that are fallen and all those type of things. For time's sake I'm not going to go into it right now but you can find uh, in Daniel chapter 7 we're going to when we look at the Antichrist, we may come across some of the verses that talk about these kingdoms, which are the five that have fallen. These are world kingdoms that have come and passed away. Um, in, in verse 11, it says, And the beast that was and is not is the eighth and goeth down into perdition. The Antichrist is going to come on the scene after this power of this revived Roman Empire is trying to unify itself again. And in that, one of the things that's going to happen is there's going to be a reorganization of, of the leadership in the old Roman Empire. Right now, there's so many countries that are in the revived, are in the Roman Empire, and they're just countries like Spain and Portugal and France and Germany and blah, 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 all these. Well, in trying to unify them, the Antichrist, uh, uh, the spirit of Antichrist is going to work to say, we need to erase the countries that are and to come up with a ten leadership board. Now, that's what it means in verse 12. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet but received power as kings one hour just for a short time with the beast. So, politically, in Europe, the revived Roman Empire is going to regroup right at the end, and the idea that is going to be set forth is that there be a ten leadership board, not from the specific countries, but in regions representing the entire Roman Empire. In that, uh, we, we're going to see some... Um, indications in scriptures that once that is happening then the Antichrist is going to be revealed. It says in verse 13, they will have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Talking about this organization but also the individual. Now, turn if you would to 1 John 4 or you can look at it up here. I think I'll just look at it up here. It's quick. I want you to know that Antichrist has already been in the world forever. Uh, not forever, but for uh, hundreds of years. I'm going to prove it to you scripturally. 1 John 4, 2 and 3. Hereby know you the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God and is, and this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come and even now already is in the world at the time of John. I want you to understand 
if you're looking for a person, it's not as important the person, but the fact that there's a spirit of Antichrist that has been working for hundreds of years to try to pull off what Satan is wanting to do to kick God out of this world and he take control of mankind. And so, don't worry about looking for an Antichrist coming. Fight the spirit of Antichrist now. And what is that spirit? That Jesus Christ is not coming to flesh. In this same section of Scripture, the Bible says, here is how you test if a spirit is from God or is a religious spirit. Do you know no demon can say Jesus Christ came in the flesh, died on the cross, and rose again? It's impossible for a demon to say that, Scripture says, because that is letting go of their legal claim to, to gain control of mankind in this world. And so, what people say about who Jesus Christ is, that God came down in the flesh to die for your sins, God doesn't want anybody to go to hell. He's paid for your get out of jail, hell forever, freedom. He's paid for it. You can choose to tear it up by never receiving Him. And say, I'll take my chances on my own with my own goodness. And you will not succeed. That spirit of Antichrist rejects the truth of the gospel. And people want to talk about love and good words, kind to your neighbor. Salvation is the person of Jesus Christ dying on the cross, raising again. Don't let the blood of Jesus Christ be, become a secondary issue to you. Religion is not about just being good to your neighbor. It's not about just being a good person. There's none good. No, not one. For we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God, God said. And the spirit of Antichrist is not just against, as in pushing away, the word anti, or antichrist, anti, uh, here in the Greek can also mean replacement. God is the real deal, but what Satan is trying to do is push Jesus to side and come up with a fake Jesus. Satan in the flesh. And that's what this antichrist is going to be. He's not going to be a virgin birth. He's going to be a real man that had a real mommy and daddy that, that God used to create him. But Satan is going to work and influence this guy. So we, I want you to see that that spirit of Antichrist is already there. If you would go to 1 John 2.18 and we see it again. It says, Little children, it is the last time that you have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time. In our country, Jesus Christ is being erased. They, won't, they don't even want you to say Christmas. I wonder why. Because the name of Jesus Christ and who and what He is. So that Spirit's at work and we need to stand against that now. We need to fight against that now and proclaim and live the truth of Jesus Christ. Now I want you to, we're going to look at specifics of the man that will be able to fulfill what Scripture says the Antichrist will do. But I want you to see that that spirit has already been in the world because some of the Scriptures we're going to look at, we're going to look at when Satan has so influenced a person's life and history that they are a model of what the Antichrist is going to be, and you can see that in Scripture. So if you would, Daniel chapter 7, verses 15 through 27. Daniel had a vision. He said, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him uh, the truth of all this, so he told me and made me to know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts are four, which are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Remember, I just got through in Revelation 17. It said five kings are. I mean five kings have fallen. One is and there's one to come. These four kingdoms are four of the five that have fallen. And by the time John in uh, Revelation had the vision, the fifth kingdom had fallen. The Greek uh, kingdom had fallen. And it was just the Roman kingdom. But anyway... Um, 
But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever and ever. Does that remind you of the stone that hit the statue and crumbled it all to dust and it became a great mountain and filled all the earth? We talked about that last week. So these kingdoms that have come up and then passed away are literally kingdoms in history that have tried to control the whole world and have had their leaders that were like the final form Antichrist will be. Then I would you know the truth of the four beasts which were diverse from others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron uh, and his nails of brass which devoured broken pieces, stacked the residue of the feet, and of the ten horns that were in his head and of the others which came up. Now notice this, this is Daniel, but it parallels what's said in Revelation. Here's what I want you to understand about that. Let's see the big picture. There are literally centuries between these two prophecies. And yet, they fit together like a glove. God's Word is one book because it has one author, God. He's given sections throughout history of what you need to know. But one of the proofs that the Word of God can be trusted and obeyed and is more up to date than today or tomorrow's newspaper is these things that it talks about. Ten horns which were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom the three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things. This horn that comes up, remember I told, told you just a minute ago there's going to be a confederation of ten areas that are going to be represented by ten leaders that don't have a direct elected by their people kingdom, but they're going to be put together to rule in the future. Something's going to happen, and here's where you'll know where the Antichrist is. It says that a little horn comes up and displaces three of those people. As I understand it, what will take place is, as the Roman Empire is reformed in this ten group is put together that through intrigue that three of the leaders that aren't ready to buy into Satan's plan will be moved out of the way to make room for the Antichrist and what he's going to take control of the whole political thing that the Bible talks about is the beast. Um, and he spake very great things going on whose look was more stout than his fellows. And I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. You can find sections in Revelation where we're going to look at uh, as time allows where it says the Antichrist makes war with the saints and he prevails against them. That's Revelation 13 we'll get to in a minute. So he makes war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints for of the Most High and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. That's the millennial kingdom. So there's going to rise this Antichrist and he is going to make war with the saints until the end time when the second coming happens and Jesus Christ um, um, comes here. It, it, I think that's there's one more set of verses, yes. And thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which is the Roman kingdom, the Roman Empire, and shall be different from all the other kingdoms, shall devour the whole earth, tread down, break pieces, and the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall rise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be different from the first. He shall subdue the three kings and shall speak great words against the Most High. First thing that you're going to see is, is the Antichrist will blaspheme and will attack genuine Christianity. He will speak against uh, what we call fundamental Christianity. He'll call them quacks. He'll call them evil. He'll call them the cancer in society. If you remember a couple of presidential uh, um, elections uh, ago, um, a candidate named Al Gore said that fundamental Christianity, and he listed five things that he called a fundamental Christian. Somebody that believes the Bible is the Word of God. Somebody that believes in miracles. 
somebody be that believes that uh, man is not basically good but needs a savior. And there were two other things that were there. And, and I was all of them. And he said, that's the trouble in America. That spirit of Antichrist is already at work trying to speak words against the Most High. We see it in our culture today. You see it on TV programs where Christians are always dumb, stupid now. They're very uh, hypocritical. They're privately evil and pretending to be so good and, and attack. It says, And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and he shall think to change times and laws. He's going to begin to say, here's what we're going to do. We're going to begin changing the times and laws of the Old Testament for the Jews. We're going to change what has been done in the past of right and wrong. We're going to do usher a new, more sophisticated mindset. Does that sound like what is happening in America with what they're trying to do with the Constitution? Constitution is a living document. We need to change it. We need to be progressive. We need to legislate instead of saying the founding fathers built a nation on these truths and we need to stay true to these truths. These spirits are already at work and we are running up against them right now. And they shall be given into his hands until a time and times and the dividing of times, which is basically three and a half years. Time times one time plus times two and half a time. Three and a half years, the last half of the tribulation period. But the judgment shall, uh, but the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. The Antichrist is going to rise for about a seven year period the first three and a half years, the human spirit will be in that body. And we're going to look at, as time allows today, that the Antichrist is going to receive a deadly wound and he's going to mimic the resurrection just like Jesus Christ. Satan's a counterfeiter. He's got nothing new of his own. He tries to imitate what God does with his own generic brain. And so the Antichrist is his little Jesus. And he's going to allow that Antichrist, we're going to see in the Scripture in a minute as we get to it, that in the middle of he's going to receive a deadly wound as if he's dead. And then he's going to resurrect, but he's not going to resurrect with a human spirit inside of him. Satan is going to take possession of the body and animate it as if the human being came back to life. But it's really Satan possessing and controlling and animating the body of a dead man. Uh, going on. Uh, but I want you to see, we win. Its kingdom shall be given to the saints of the Most High. Brothers and sisters, don't get weary and well done. Don't get tired. Don't buy into this world. This ship is going down. This world system is passing away. Lay up treasures in heaven. Be busy about the business of the kingdom. That's what we should be about. Going on whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey Him. Talking about the Lord. Now, we're going to go to the New Testament. Let's see. Was that? That was 7. Let's go to Daniel 11, verses 36 through 38. And you'll see the same thing. This is talking about the, the human Antichrist. And the king shall do according to his will. The Antichrist will have great power, and he'll pretty well do what he wants to, as if he was dictator and emperor of the world. He shall exalt himself. If that spirit isn't already in the world where everybody wants to lift up themselves as a somebody and magnify himself above every God, the whole spirit that I see gripping athletes, I see gripping politicians, I see even gripping protesters, in, 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 uh, it used to be in America, people have different opinions. We have the freedom of speech and there's a right way to protest. But there is a spirit that exalts itself above every God, that magnifies itself and tries to uh, dominate and dictate. He shall speak marvelous things, and marvelous doesn't mean great things. It'll just be yeah, hard to believe. 
And when he talks about the brave new world, about man evolving, about, uh, as I said, um, a man 2.0, of evolving through technology and things, a brave new world that we're going to come. We're going to solve all the world's problems. Just follow me. I've got all the answers. He's going to speak marvelous things against the God of gods, which is the true God, and shall prosper till the indignation. And, and I want, real quick, to touch on this. Why would God allow the Antichrist to prosper? First of all, do you know what? God is pretty secure in being God. He's not afraid that somebody's going to depose him, that somebody can outwit him, outpower him, outwrestle him in an arm wrestling match. God knows he's God. So it's sort of like a, a little bitty boy coming up to Superman and just punching him in the belly. Why does Superman allow this little kid to punch him in the belly or Lex Luthor to shoot bullets in him? Because he knows it will have no effect. And it will show that God is God, and Satan and the Antichrist are not. So he's allowed to seemingly prosper till the indignation be accomplished. Everybody that's on Satan's side will come out of the woodwork. There won't be any middle ground to hide in. You'll either be for God, surrendered to Him and His kingdom, or you bought into the Antichrist, Satan, and a rebel against God. There is no in-between. There is no middle ground. You must choose. Who will be your Lord and Savior? Who will you give your heart, soul, mind to? Who are you loyal to? Uh, uh, it will be accomplished. For that is determined that it shall be done. You know what? Sooner or later, these prophecies are going to happen no matter what you do. Because God's Word will be fulfilled. Should we roll over and say, well, what are you going to do? It's going to happen anyway. No. We can have it prolonged where it's not in our day if we walk in righteousness. If we'll seek God. If revival takes place, God may give us an opportunity where it doesn't happen in our lifetime. Or it may happen in our lifetime even if we do seek God. But it is going to be accomplished. And we should stay focused on our job. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers so evidently, he comes from some faith background that may not be a, the real religion, but it does have capital G. So uh, it may be that he came from a religious background that would have had some truth in it, but denies it. Nor desires women. Uh, he, he, he's not going to be seduced by women. He's not after sex. He's not after anything. He doesn't, he's not afraid of any God. He has no loyalty except to himself. For he shall magnify himself above all. He will try to get everybody to worship him. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces. Now, this is an interesting thing of the God of forces. It indicates that not only military power, but the power to make things happen. The power to accomplish a goal. And my personal thought in this particular strange word that is chosen here in, in Hebrew for forces is demonic and technological power to make things happen. And so I think he's going to uh, worship technology as the cutting edge of mankind being able to overcome death and overcome the curse that God put because of Adam's sin. He's going to say that we're going to evolve, brave new world. And a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold, silver, precious stones, and pleasant things. In other words, he will give his riches to the idea of developing, I believe, technologies and that he believes will cause mankind to evolve. You want to help? That's it. Oh, that's it. Verse Two more verses and we're through. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 12. New Testament talking about the Antichrist. Let no man deceive you by any means. So there's a, a deceptive idea that we've got to deal with first. For that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. 
People are going to begin to depart from the truth. People are going to deny the truths of the gospel. And if you look at statistics in our day and time of people in church, you know over uh, two-thirds of the people from evangelical churches do not believe in the Bible being the absolute Word of God. I mean, the, the, the things that are being departed of in most churches, I don't know if you talk and, and, and are aware of what happens in, in Christendom and in our country, but most people are falling away from the basic truth of God's Word. You know why? Because people have itching ears. And they want teachers that will tell them what they want to hear. Those churches will put lots of people in the seats and seem to be really doing something. We need to stay true to preaching this book without compromise. Preaching it in love. But we need to stay true to these fundamentals. Whether people like them or not. These are the things. But there's going to be a falling away and that fits Revelation chapter 3 that says the last church will be a lukewarm church. Not realizing they're riddled with problems. They think they're rich and have goods and have a need of nothing. And don't know their wretched condition. And that man of sin shall be revealed. We are currently <coughs> in this part. Falling away first. This is where we're at right now. I can, from Scripture and what's happening in our world, that's where we are. And then, the next thing is you'll be able to identify the Antichrist. You'll know who he is. He will come on the scene. That man will be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. Isn't it amazing how there is a spirit that nobody wants you to talk about the true and living God. There's a hatred, a demonic hatred, for the name of Jesus Christ, for the things of God, and for anybody that will stand true to it. They'll smear you, they'll attack you, they'll do whatever, because I want you to understand, this is a spiritual battle. There is a spirit of Antichrist that has been working we have gotten lukewarm and not been under the control of the Holy Spirit. We've grieved and quenched the Holy Spirit. And now as good and evil fight, we do not have the empowerment of the Holy Spirit the way we should to address this evil. And that's why this evil is good this nation. But if my people will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal from that. And so I'm challenged, and I'm challenging you. Are you humbling yourself? Are you praying? Are you seeking God's face? Are you turning from your wicked ways? If not, no hope for America. And we'll be lukewarm, and we'll live through days that we wished we'd never see. So, next verse. So that He is as God sitting in the temple of God. There will be a rebuilt temple. He will broker the deal. We know that He'll broker the seven years peace treaties that will allow the Jews to rebuild their temple. Showing Himself that He's God. In the middle of the tribulation period, He is going to enter the rebuilt temple and He is going to declare that He is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you yet, I told you these things. And how do you not, uh, how now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. This is important. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Do you know what's holding back us from being in the section where the Antichrist is revealed? The Holy Spirit. And next Sunday when we talk about is there a rapture? And if so, when does it take place? Remember this verse because he can't be revealed until the Holy Spirit is removed. And we'll talk about that as far as knowing about the time of a rapture. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. That demonic antichrist spirit is trying to get a hold of the world. The Holy Spirit working through His church 
has withheld it. We've been light and salt. But God's going to do something to remove that. Only when He who now letteth will act, and then in time He's going to take His hands off and He will be able to do what He wants to do. And he'll be take, the Holy Spirit will be taken out of the way. We'll look at this next week. And then shall that wicked be revealed. You are not going to know who the Antichrist comes until the Holy Spirit is removed out of the way. So, don't worry about who the Antichrist is. And it says, He shall consume with the spirit of His mouth, destroy the brightness of His coming. Even Him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. What are lying wonders? This Antichrist is going to be able to do miracles that appear to be good and beneficial to mankind, but are designed to get them to worship Him and to leave the truth of God's Word and the true and living God. And so, just because something is miraculous and in the name of God, you better not believe it. You better check it through Scripture. That's the only true filter. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, notice, deceived. People are so deceived in our day and time. Why? Because they're not in this book. They don't know this book. They don't devour this book and they don't filter everything in life to what thus saith the Lord. You're going to be deceived. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. You know what? If we're in the time that I think we are, most people aren't going to listen to what I have to say. But that doesn't mean I stop saying it. Because God will use on Judgment Day the fact that they have been told. And they were warned and they walked away. Why? Because they love not the truth. They don't have a love for God. Most people that I've run across don't have a love for God. Oh, they want God as a giant genie to do them favors. They want some lucky religious thing in their pocket to make it where their life is better, some magic to make their life work. But there's no love of God in their heart. It's using God. And I want to challenge you. Is the love of God in your heart? Are you being sucked up and being set up in deception? That they may be, uh, they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure and in righteousness. The last verse. Well, verses uh, Revelation 13, 3 through 6. We'll go through them real quick. I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. That's where the Antichrist is wounded and it looks like he's dead. And his deadly wound was healed. That's the fake resurrection. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power to the beast. Uh, worship Satan. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like in the beast who is able to make war with him? Everybody's going to think this guy is, is the greatest person who's ever lived. And there was given to him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 42 months. That's that time times and half a time, the last three and a half years of tribulation, Satan himself is going to be in a human body that the human spirit's not in there. And he's going to be walking this earth. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, so the temple was rebuilt, and then that dwell in the heavens. The Antichrist. Don't worry about who he is. His spirit's already at work. And we should be fighting against that spirit that will be empowered in this individual. We see in our own lifetime the growing spirit of Antichrist gaining more and more power in our culture, in our media, in our schools, in everywhere. So if you want to fight the Antichrist, don't wait till you see him in human form. It is a spirit. It is the spirit of Lucifer and Satan himself. You and I have weaponry, the armor of God, the word of God, and the word of our testimony. And that's how we overcome. And so may we be faithful to that. Let's pray.